Hey guys, it's Marsha and welcome to Really Seriously For Real. This is part two of my two-part review of Game of Thrones first episode for season eight. Now, if you haven't had a chance to catch part one, I will link it here and down below. Since there was so much to catch up with, I went a little crazy, but this is the final season after all. Now, before we get started, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you're always notified when I upload a video. Let's get into this. We last left off with Varys' ominous warning that nothing lasts. And then we cut to Daenerys pouting about how Sansa doesn't like her. And then she says the most peculiar thing. She doesn't have to be my friend, but I am her queen if she doesn't respect me. And then silence. Like, I will roast her like I did the Tarleys. See, I don't know. This... <laughs> This had me a little ticked. If I was John, any bit of puppy love I had would have fizzled out the moment you threatened my sister. They really had me mad at Daenerys this episode because she keeps forgetting that she was married off to a great cow. And so she gained respect by default. When she died, she stepped into a fire and was respected because she emerged alive and with three baby dragons. Then she tried to bully her way into Karth and bully them out of boats. Then she got her unsullied, so they respected her when they were given their freedom. She freed slaves, so they were grateful. So grateful, in fact, they raised her in the air and yelled, Misa. It was a beautiful moment. She just released them from indentured servitude. So, of course, they loved her. When she was captured by the Dothraki again, after the Harpy attacked, and she flew off with Drogon, which she left her friends, by the way, but, you know, <laughs> whatever. She got rid of all the calls by torching the dome they were in and emerging yet again from the flames. She solidified their allegiance by giving a rousing speech on top of a massive dragon. Now, she showed up in the north like, why don't they like me? They have to like me. No, they actually don't. <laughs> then insinuating Sansa might be in trouble, though, okay, listen, in all fairness, Sansa could have been even more diplomatic or Danny should have spoke to Sansa alone, have like a one-on-one. -on -one. Anywho, good thing the Dothraki rode up and interrupted because this led to John riding a dragon instead of John slaying one. <laughs> okay, John riding a dragon. It was sweet. And when they landed after John like controlled Rhaegal, it was beautiful. Even if the dialogue was a bit corny, keep your queen warm, barf. <laughs> but Drogon staring them down while they were kissing, it was priceless. But listen, at the end of the day, I thought John riding the dragon would be more poignant. Like Rhaegal would motion to John to hop on and it would make Daenerys so curious that she couldn't shake that feeling. Like, wow, he can ride a dragon? Huh, but no, it was more of like a filler moment to release the tension in the room, if you will. All right, Arya reunites with the Hound and Gendry. So I was bummed about the Hound reunion. I was, I was really hoping for like even the slightest smile and camaraderie between the two. I mean, the hound sort of did it when he says like, oh, maybe that's how you survived. But Arya never seemed to soften throughout their whole exchange. I mean, I guess it's, that's their way to say hi to each other. <laughs> but I still wish that there was like a little bit of a smirk between the two. I mean, he was like a proud dad when Brienne said that she was alive and could basically take care of herself. And Arya got slapped on the knuckles several times from Jock and Agar when she said why she left the Hound to die and why she removed his name from her list. Independently, I know they respect each other, but I wish they knew it. <laughs> All right, so her and uh, Gendry, they had like some low key flirting, but this order though that she put in for the staff is intriguing. All right, she has Needle already. Okay, so obviously that's useless in this coming battle, but she already has this Valerian Steel Dagger, which she didn't show to John. surprisingly. 
I'm sure Arya wants a weapon that will allow her to keep her distance from her targets, so go ahead, little assassin. On to Sansa and John, chapter 12. <laughs> John walks in and Sansa informs him that House Glover is like, Peace! We'll be staying in Deepwood Mott. Good luck, fools. John is like, Didn't they say they will stand with the stocks? No, John. They said that they would stand with Jon Snow. King of the North, snaps Sansa. Oops. <laughs> Look, both of them bring up really great points. John tells her, I brought you a massive army and dragons. We can't defeat the Night King without them. Then he asked her, do you have any faith in me at all? To which Sansa replies, of course. But in all fairness, she's only saw John in action at the Battle of the Bastards. And honestly, he didn't do too hot. But Sansa asks him after a pause, did he bend the knee to save the North or because he loved Daenerys? Valid question. Cause they cut to another scene, so he didn't answer. But I will. John didn't have to bend the knee. This like had me so mad. He held firm to his beliefs and to the North's trust in him. Everything, right up to the end. He was not giving up the trust of the North for someone he didn't know. She gallantly swooped in with her three dragons and toasted a great portion of the Night King's army when they had them all stuck on the rock in the middle of the frozen lake. She lost one of her dragons, yes, in the process. So, okay, she's ready to kick the Night King into the next long night. John didn't have to bend the knee. She was a willing party. If they arrived at Winterfell with all their titles intact, she could have properly won everyone over, looking more like a concerned friend who wants to help instead of a conqueror who manipulated their king. The North, united, could have come to a decision together. I suppose you could call it more of like a democratic decision. But instead, the North feels as though they were left out. They, united, chose their king and they chose him because they trusted him and now they feel that trust was thrown away so yeah sansa very good question all right so next up we have jora reuniting with sam and daenerys meeting the man who saved his life when this scene first opens i was just so involved with the fact that sam was just being sam an absolutely lovable kind of guy I was giggling so much watching Sam interact with her and then ask for a pardon because he stole some books from the Citadel. Like, aw, Sam, you're just, you're just so adorable. But then he mentions the ancestral sword he stole from his family, House Tarly. I'm like, oh dear lord. <laughs> Everything was going so well. And then it's like, we're losing altitude. We're losing altitude. We're going down. The look on Daenerys' face, you would think she swallowed her tongue. She was like, um, you, you don't mean Randall Tarly, do you? One in the same, Daenerys. One in the same. You know that one that Tyrion was trying desperately to dissuade you from melting down? Yeah. That Randall Tarly and his son. Now, I will give you this. She was woman enough to tell Sam herself, but... Why couldn't she at least like take his hand and kind of console him or something? I mean, I guess she is quote unquote a queen, but she needs to learn some empathy. So now Sam is like, I gotta go. And Daenerys just blankly says like, oh yeah, of course, go ahead. Oh, and poor Jorah, <laughs> he can barely look at Sam. If they wanted to bring doubt into Daenerys' character in this episode, then they succeeded. Upset, Sam stumbles his way down the stairs outside to the courtyard and sees Bran just hanging out outside in the dark cold. Sam was like, what are you doing here? And Bran replies, waiting for an old friend. Now, of course, now we know who that friend was. But initially, you're like, this boy is everywhere. But Bran tells Sam, the time is now. Sam must tell John who his real parents were. Bran is super calculated. He knew that Sam was about to get this heartbreaking news. And while he's 
emotional and hating Danny, this is when he needs to tell John. Hmm. Brand needed Sam to emotionally reveal the news in such a way that there would be no doubt for John. Now, down in the crypts, John is standing in front of Ned's statue, lighting candles like a dutiful son. And then you hear Sam stumbling his way through the crypts. They hug it out, and Sam is like, Boom! Did you know that your little girlfriend murdered my family? And poor John. He spent all this time defending Daenerys and how great of a queen she's going to be. And then of all the people you had to hurt, it had to be my best friend. And John tried to smooth things over. But come on, you really can't. Not in this situation. And then Sam is just like, you're a king, John. And John says, I surrendered the title. Like, enough already about this. Not you too. And then Sam is like, dude, think bigger. I'm talking about the whole seven kingdoms. And then it's like, wait a minute. We're really doing this. And we're doing it in front of Leanna's statue. It was such the perfect touch. What do you do, John? What do you do? Next up, we make our way to a dark and scary castle where Tormund and Beric Dondarrion are making their way through the cold halls, searching for any sign of life through the blood-stained path. We laugh so hard when Tormund kind of stops a bit and doesn't want to go forward and then Beric walks ahead and Tormund kind of gives him a look like, oh man, fine. <laughs> anyway, after some tense moments, they run into Ed and he shows them the young Umber boy, the one that we saw from the start of the show. Unfortunately, he was not able to get his people out and he ended up the centerpiece to a very gruesome art project from the Night King. Beric said it was a message. And what a message it was. Spiral in shape, the same spiral shape we continue to see all throughout the show as the Night King's symbol and the children of the forest used that symbol when they created him. So it's creepy <laughs> and it's cryptic, but it's all we got. Was anyone else freaked out when Tormund had his back to the kid and all of a sudden his eyes opened? I was yelling at the screen like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> totally, totally a freaky moment. But anyway, let's get back to Winterfell because now it's the next morning. And we see that the camera is focused on a figure on horseback making their way through Winterfell's gates. So at this point, I guess, I don't know, I guess I didn't think that it would be Jamie. And I remember Francois even said, like, well, maybe it's Melisandre. But then the big reveal, it's Jamie. A far cry from the fresh-faced Ken doll he was when he first showed up at Winterfell back in the start of the series. Now he's graying, looking much more weathered and haggard. Jamie scans around the courtyard and he smiles to himself, probably thinking like, yeah, I did the right thing. I'm going to be here for them. They're going to be so proud of me. I'm so proud of myself. And then boom, there's Bran sitting in the same spot that he was when he saw Sam last. Like this dude really sat outside all night waiting for an old friend. Waiting for you, Jamie. Oh, the three-eyed raven. He must have big plans for you. I gotta hand it to Game of Thrones. They put together an awesome episode. And yes, it was a total setup episode. Absolutely. But it has to be there because there's like bigger things that are coming in this final season. And it is the final season. So like Bran said, we ain't got time for that. So what was your favorite part of the episode? Comment down below. I'm super curious to know because they're... There's just so much going on. Pick one, have fun, and don't forget to watch part one of this review if you haven't already. Make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe while you're at it. Yes, I will be doing Game of Thrones reviews for the final season and they'll be much earlier than this. I was just a little apprehensive because there's like literally millions of reviews going up, but I don't know. I'm just such a fan and I love talking about Game of Thrones. So go ahead, 
follow along with me. <laughs> and thanks for watching. Until next time.